Okay, oh, now oh. We, we know it's not your first time in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, actually, the last time that you were there, uh, there was some drama surrounding your entry into the city. But before we get there, let's put that aside. <laughs> that Kenya has been an athletic powerhouse on the global scene for over half a century. And we've racked up tons of medals uh, in middle and long distance races over the years. We, however, watched the short distance sprints on the sidelines and never imagined ever making the podium in international competition. This was until a previously unknown young man from the foothills of Mount Elgon burst into the scene like a swift and dramatic thunderclap. On the show tonight, we are hosting a man who shifted the axis at which the Kenyan earth rotated, who goes by the name Ferdinand Omanyala. Now, Omanyala started his journey on the track back in 2017 and started obliterating several uh, long-standing Kenyan records in the short-distance sprints. He went on to qualify for the 2021 Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan, and narrowly missed the 100 meters uh, finals. Omanyala in the same year competed at the World Indoor Championships in Belgrade, Serbia, and made the 60-meter semifinals. And in 2022, in St. Pierre, Mauritius, Ferdinand Omanyala was crowned the undisputed African champion after crossing the line ahead of South African Fino Makani Simbine. He then went on uh, and made the semifinals of the World Championships uh, in Eugene, Oregon. That was 2022. And still in 2022, Omanyala won the 100 meters gold medal in the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, UK. And he more recently made the finals in the just concluded Budapest World Championships. There's so many, there's another competition that he won after that. I came to learn about that. He'll tell us about that later. And also not forgetting that Omanyala clocked the ninth fastest time of all time in 100 meters at 9.77 seconds on September 18th of 2021 at the Kipkeno Classic at Nairobi's Moy International Sports Center, Kasarani. He is currently in the U.S. and scheduled to suit up tomorrow, Saturday the 16th, for a 100-meter race at 1.07 p.m. Pacific time. That's 4.07 p.m. Eastern time at the Diamond League leg in Eugene, Oregon's Prefontaine Classic. Ferdinand Omanyala, the man, the myth, the legend. Welcome to the One Mike Show and tell us how you're doing today. Thank you very much, guys, for having me here today. I mean, um, I'm blessed to be here. I've been in Oregon for like the last five days. And man, the love I've been shown up. It's been crazy. Like I've been fed. We've had a lot of food. We're still eating and eating, but that won't affect tomorrow, I guess. Oh, 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 <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, oh. Now we, we know it's not your first time in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, actually the last time that you were there, uh, there was some drama surrounding your entry into the city. But before we get there, let's put that aside. I want you to tell us, you know, um, exactly when you got there uh, and you've already started telling us how your experience was. You, you said that there was there's all kinds of food. Were these like pizzas, burgers, lasagna? What kind of foods are we talking about? Fried Omiala? chicken. Yeah. Miranda. Homo de homo de. Osuga. Exactly. That what, that's what you're talking about. Like home food. Home food. The Kenyans have been greatly. Um, they came through for me. Actually. So, so are you saying there's a Kenyan restaurant there, or just regular Kenyans from around there uh, started yeah. feeding you? Kuna like, na skuma ugali uko. <laughs> there's this one guy. I mean, um, and it was Louis. By the way, I'm a, I'm a fan of big things, man. Yes, like Lu- he's, Louis. I, I met him in Atlanta some time back this year. Mm-hmm. And he's done a great job mobilizing the Kenyans that are around here to bring us food. And we've been enjoying it. Eshirandula Chief Louis. And he's also the one who made this interview <laughs> possible. So Asante Sana. And I know he's tuned in. And he has a big heart. He, has, big a, heart. he has a very big very heart. Very big heart. Yeah, he's so, a great guy. Yeah, he's so, a great guy. So thank yeah. you so much. And I know, you know, like there's Kenyans who are now, you know, like driving down. Who are the young ones at the home one? Ah, uh, oh, po, Pole. Ah, okay, okay. Po, pole, Mika Vanduba. Pole, okay, pole, okay, pole. Cousin, cousin Eshirandula Chief Louis. But uh, Louis Asante Sana, you know, we appreciate what you're doing. And, and, um, and 
of course Omanyala here is very very uh, appreciative uh, and then you know like uh, I, I want to see I see everybody's cut is, is already in I can see Sleodwar Mukurima nasema tu kondani uh, Chief Louis you kondani Makarena Mwana tusikiza kutoka Texas Washeke Ndirangu is in the building Afro-Jamaican I can see Tara is here too uh, Afro Jamaican is he here he said yes, he was going to be a bit here. late today YouTube. ah okay okay yep. all right and there's people Nia on YouTube already on YouTube uh, Usiwaze uh, I don't know Usiwaze is lakini karibu Usiwaze okay all right we welcome and make sure you share this stream so that all the Kenyans can get a chance to not only listen to Omanyala but also have a chance uh to to talk to him and honor remind the callers that number to call is 202 683 Four five seven zero press star five to speak. We're gonna be checking to see uh, if anyone is calling, anyone who wants to talk to um, anyone who wants to talk to uh, Omanyala. We're gonna be right here, and he'll be here to answer your questions. I wanna remind the listeners also join, just joining us that you're tuned into the One Mike Show, and I'm your co-host and producer Ali Badawi. Our guest tonight is Africa's 100 meters champion Ferdinand Omanyala. He's scheduled to suit up tomorrow, Saturday the 16th, for a 100 meter race at 1.07 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 4.07 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. I know what to uh, Central time, Wanasema Wameacho, that's going to be 3.07 p.m. Central time at the Diamond League leg in Eugene, Oregon's Prefontaine Classic. Now, this race will feature world, uh, American world champion Noah Lyles and Botswana's Letzile Tebogo. It will be aired live on NBC Sports. So mark your calendars for that, uh, for those who are not in Eugene, Oregon, and uh, the Wonder Diamond League YouTube page. I don't know whether it's going to be live in the U.S., but I know the Diamond League uh, page sometimes uh, streams these uh, races live. So check out Wonder Diamond League on YouTube uh, if you're one of those people who doesn't have a uh, cable and what has it that a number of Kenyans from Portland Oregon and Seattle Washington have made their way down to Eugene to see Omanyala in action at the Prefontaine Classic now later in the show Mika our sports anchor will be asking Omanyala about uh, race day preparation so I want you to stay tuned for that but before we continue Uno Mike there is a collaboration that uh, the one Mike show recently signed up with Bora Lounge Please tell Omanyala about it because it might be of interest to him. Uno Mike. Should, should I tell him or Mika should? Eh? Before I get eaten. Okay, let Mika. Mika, okay. go ahead. Uno, let, let, <laughs> let Uno get ahead and do it today. Okay. Ah, so so me patiwa rusa na sports anka. Ni me ni me patiwa rusa. Yeah. All right. So we have a collaboration going on with uh, with Bora Lounge, Bora Bora Lounge. It's a virtual uh, to end study. Mm-hmm. So the the rugby World Cups have already started. Uh, they started last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, started off with a bang, uh, New Zealand, France. Uh, so uh, this weekend we have games. We've, we had games today, Friday, uh, 3 p.m. So tomorrow and uh, tomorrow Saturday and Sunday. Boralounge.com. Boralounge.com. Virtual study for those who cannot make it uh, to go to Beyond France. Deal. Uh, people who are not going to who had uh, bought tickets but were unavailable or uh, unable to because they had to get married boralounge.com ingia huko mwingeni huko tuingie huko virtual study big up to agura uh, and uh, big up to otionovi for setting it up musiseme amuku ambiwa or as ali says musingoje kusimuliwa yeah usingoje kusimuliwa he is here dithi umewaambia umewaambia pia kutakuwa na hiyo mbio itakuwa kwa hiyo bora oh and bio Bio Pia, yes. it aqua hapo Bora Lounge. So you have rugby, you have got uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Ferdinand, Ferdi, Apo, yep. Oregon. Musingoja kusimuliwa. Musi, Tafadhali ya Musingoja kusimuliwa. <laughs> Mutike ya tarara, tarara please. Yes. Yeah. Na nawakumbusha tena, hii si hadithi ya pauku wa pakawa. Na wala siye kaza abunuasi. So, 1.07 p.m. Pacific time, 4.07 p.m. Eastern time, and 3 or 7 p.m. Central Time, Watua, Texas. So make sure you're tuned in tomorrow. Now, wanna go back to uh, wanna go back to Omanyala, uh, and we know that you burst into the Kenyan athletic scene like a mysterious thunderclap. Most of us didn't know who Omanyala was prior to 2017, and I want us to get started from the very beginning. You know, like because right now you're on top of the world, but wanna go back to the very beginnings, and please take us back to where you were born and raised. And maybe walk us through to when you first started noticing that you have some speedy feet. Omanyala. Yeah. Um, 
I remember I I was born and uh, I I was born in a place called Hamisi in Vihiga County. Um, after that, I moved out. Uh, we moved out when I was pretty. I was still a small guy, I think six or five months, and then we went to settle in uh, a place called Tongareni. Tongareni is in Bungoma. Is in Bungoma now, Bungoma County. So that's where I grew up, and uh, I grew up in a family setting that has a normal family setting where, you know, father, mother. I have four brothers. We're only brothers at our place, so we are five brothers in our family. So we grew up in that in that setting. And my dad was a guy who really loves books, and he really wanted his sons to go through school education and get jobs and you know proceed with life. That was what my parents really looked out for us, and uh, that's how it was growing up. We had even a library at the back of our house, so everybody had his own desk. <laughs> wow! So when you, when you come from school, you do school <laughs> homework and then you do your father's homework. So you have two homeworks to do, Up and uh, we, we would prefer to finish our father's homework even before the school homework. Before, because my dad was that, that that person who really wanted us to really do good in school, and he was giving us books of the next class. You know, if you're in class one, you bought a textbook for class two. Wow! So I mean, <laughs> you have to read ahead. And the homework that he gives you is for the next class. So that's, that, that's how it was. And um, I, I didn't realize that he really helped us then, but that now I realize that he really helped us because now going into the outside world and, you know, the interaction that you're having. All said and done, uh, we, I went through, fast forward, I went to St. Russell Preparatory, one of the schools in Naitiri, <laughs> that's the western part of the country. And then I did my class eight and uh, joined high school. Train school Kamsinga. That's where I joined. I did my high school, and I was there for the normal years uh, of the high school level. And then um, now in high school is when now things started changing, because okay. I remember I did my form one and form two, and uh, I was an indisciplined boy, because <laughs> I remember I got two suspensions consecutively okay. in form two. Like wow. I go to school in the morning. Evening, I was given another suspension. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> the second suspension really made me realize that uh, this is not my parents' life. Because I went home and um, my dad and my mom were sitting there and they asked me if I really wanted to go to school. And they gave me so many examples of guys who have really failed in life. And it, it hit me hard. I realized that I, I need to like just put myself together. And this is not for them. This is for me. So I, I decided to take back my senses, wherever they were, and just put myself back together and go back to school and work things out. So I went back to school. I uh, remember it was in August uh, 20, 2012. Went back to school and I had a meeting with myself. You know when you have the meeting with yourself, like talking to yourself through the mirror and stuff. Mm-hmm. I told myself, man, you need to be a man. <laughs> You're no longer a boy. Okay. And Looking at where I come from, a very humble background, I wasn't like willing to just. My my dad was sacrificing a lot to pay our school fees, and because um, we had we were four four we were four of us in national school, and there were so much fees going into those schools, okay. and that made me really realize that my dad is doing a lot for us. So that's when I changed, and now I decided to do sports. 